So week four or five of lockdown, it would be the week we're catching up on who won the Masters, who got the green jacket. Instead, you know, we've got to wait probably till I think November now to see when that takes place. Um, I've been catching up probably like many of you on some of the reruns of the Masters and the Ryder Cup, and that's that's been that's been great. It's not quite the same as watching it live and watching some of the PGA Tour events and other sports that are normally on this time of year. Um, caught up with many of you this week, individual and in groups. Um, we've come up with a few ideas and bits and pieces that are going on in our routines when we're practicing at home. Also had a couple of questions, so let's nip over and have a little look. Um, we're going to jump over to the field now and deal with one of the things that we've had in one of the chats on pitching again. Going on to tip of the week now. We're going to talk a little bit about pitching again. We covered obviously ball flight and controlling the ball flight by different wrist positions. What I want to try and get to the bottom of this week's come up as some feedback on last week's newsletter and in some of our chats we've been having is, is the ability to hit the ground in the right spot and to control that low point when you hit the pitch. A lot of people saying that they're going under the ball, hitting the ground in the wrong spot. So one of the things I try and look for when I'm setting up to hit a pitch shot and to float it onto the green, I'm trying to feel, you know, people have said to me that I try and shift my weight forward and I get my weight into my left side. I try and think about it not so much of my lower half, I try and think about my top half. If I lean my lower half forward and then I feel like I've got to try and get the handle forward, I often get a scenario where I'm a little steep and I dig the club into the ground and the ball doesn't go forward. Try and feel that you adjust your top half, and I'm going to try and hit it a little bit higher here. Try and feel that you adjust your top half, so I feel my weight is slightly forward now, but my left side forward there, I feel my chest is a little bit more over the ball. Still got the ball far enough forward to create height. I've opened the face a little bit to engage and bounce, and now I'm going to try and feel that the club move slightly under the ball and hits a little pop-up shot. So hopefully that was helpful to those that you've been practicing your pitching in the back garden. I issued a little challenge last week to a few of the groups and into the newsletter about sending me in your practice facilities that you set up at home. Um, didn't have to be a practice net, it could have been a chipping station, anything really, and I received a load of pictures in and some videos, so thank you very much to everyone that took the time to send those in. Really good fun that. I've picked a winner, so Tony Hale, well done. I'm gonna send you out um, a TP5, TP5X golf ball pack so you can do some chipping and putting with those. So that, that will go in the post to you. Um, I'll play the video now, particularly like the golf ball collector. Well done. Beautiful. So I've been talking in most uh, newsletters that we've been releasing about our Zoom group chats that we've been having. There's been some superb ideas sharing. There's been some great chats. Managed to get a couple of guests on as well. And last week, uh, David Miller kindly uh, got us an intro to Matthew Southgate, European tour player. Uh, very generous with his time. Superb stories. Uh, gave us some great information as well. Just going to play you a little snippet now. If you're interested in joining the chats, by the way, please email me or send me a message and I can get you involved. Just, just diving back in on what Louis said a minute ago about three people you, that you, you'd want to play with, um, slightly different take on it. What, who have you played with that you've walked off the golf course and thought, wow, you know, like great golf swing, great ball striker, good putter. You know, who have you walked off and just gone, oh, it's blown me away? You know, who's, who's been up there? I've, I've had the privilege of playing with a lot of the top boys. Um, I played with Rory at the Gay Club on the Saturday when he won the, he won the Irish Open. I came fourth in the, in the Irish Open when he won that. Oh, God. He, he hit certain jumps. You just you couldn't couldn't dream to hit better shots. You know, he's like, he's fairway woods, which is never seen anything like it. He was like waiting for a par five for, in two. I've already laid up. And he's standing there and just thinks, I can't believe that he's waiting for the green. He's like 280 to the green. And then he'll hit yeah. the it takes off like he's a driver. It looks like he's hit a driver off a tee peg, but he's hit three with the deck. I just could not believe how high like he launches it. So that was he Rory was really impressive. Big thank you to European tour player Matthew Southgate. Very generous with his time. Great information there. I think everyone enjoyed that one. Um, I've actually put another video in underneath uh, the newsletter if you, you have a look at that. And if you're on YouTube, click the link. There's a link in the bio there that will take you straight into the, the next video with uh, our very own Jasper Carr. He's talking about the clubs that he's using this year and why he uses them and telling us that he, what his fitting processes, etc. So that, that's a really good one. I would definitely check that out. Also, if you wouldn't mind uh, nipping over to Facebook and giving our uh, page a follow and a like, it's Chigwell Pro Shop and Performance Studio. That would, uh, that would help us out and be appreciated. And lastly, obviously, stay safe and hope to see you all soon.